It is your PrisonPlanet.tv memberships that fund so much of what we do here in this operation. And then we're more than happy for the TV show after it's aired live, then be leaked out onto the web to tens of millions of people. That's our goal. Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, and it is September 9th, 2012, and I'm your host, Alex Jones. We're going to be here for the next two hours. Monday through Friday, we're here, 12 noon to 3 p.m. Eastern, three-hour transmission. Sundays, it's 4 to 6 Central, 5 to 7 Eastern, 2 to 4 Pacific, 3 to 5 Mountain. And uh, I've got a lot of news I want to go over today, a ton of it, in fact. But more importantly than just the general, you know, daily incredible developments is the fact that observing people in public, watching uh, television, studying the culture, it really hit me. Uh, something we've said many times, but, but, but that it really is true. And daily, weekly, monthly, more and more true. That the general public is in a false reality. They behave like children, they're simple-minded, even if they have high IQs, they are just so incredibly innocent. In fact, innocent isn't enough of a word. They are domesticated. They are like uh, a guinea pig that lives in a cage and thinks that the people feeding it are nice. and it, it, it notices there's five or six other guinea pigs and that sometimes one of them disappears, never comes back, and more guinea pigs get put in. And then finally one day they're sitting there, you know, eating their food, drinking their water, and the hand comes in and gets them and takes them uh, into another room. And, and they, they see a new cage, a new container, and they get thrown into that. And there's a, a, a scary looking thing. And there's nowhere to get out. It scrabbles at the side of the glass and begs for begs for mommy and daddy, the humans that bring it food, but they don't come, and the big snake wraps around it, crushes it, and then swallows it whole. And that's what the public's like. I listen in restaurants, I listen where I work out, I listen when I'm swimming around in the lake or the river or the pool or the pond, uh, Barton Springs, and, and, and I listen to people sitting there wearing a fedora or a baseball cap so people don't know who I am. If I speak, most people end up being listeners. It's amazing. And I, and I just hear how, yeah, Fred, he disappeared, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, the uh, mother, the uh, oh, she's an executive, yeah. They don't care that she makes $300,000 a year. They found THC in her blood when she went in to have her child, and uh, yeah, she's 41, and the CPS took the kid. They're like uh, guinea pigs. I mean, the general public is a prey animal, and the criminals have now created a unified field of corruption. They're mopping up the final areas of freedom and anything decent. And they're removing due process. Uh, they are above the law and completely criminal. Uh, and they've created this uh, full spectrum attack. So I have a little set of notes here today that uh, after I cover some news, I'm going to get into. Uh, number one, this is real. That's a point I want to impart to the listeners. I mean, I'm not up here trying to scare you. In fact, I hold back, okay? Uh, and, and you know what? I'm not a guinea pig, okay? And I know there's a big fat snake over there in that cage, and I'm watching it eat people worldwide, and, and, and you know, it's telling me it loves me, and it's liberal, and, you know, it's a nanny state. And, and I guess you do take care of the uh, rats or uh, the baby mice, the pinkies you feed to snakes. I mean, I guess you do take care of it before you uh, eat them politically, uh, financially, uh, societally. Talk about the globalists being above the law, how a disinfo uh, campaign works. Uh, I will expose the hoax factory. Uh, also, Agenda 21 special report with Melissa Melton, amazing report. And um, what no due process means for you and your family. It means no security. Prepare for the globalists to give you a high-tech gang raping. They already are injecting your food, your water with things to kill you. But first, torture you slowly.
We are blasting out worldwide, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Sunday edition of my six-day-a-week radio transmission. We're here Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas with over 80 stations on the Sunday show picking it up, like our local great affiliate, number one in talk, News Radio 590 KLBJ, uh, great stations like WNOX, uh, right there in Knoxville, Tennessee, and so many others. Over 115 stations picking up the weekday show. And it is a testament, as well as, as XM 166 picks up the weekday show. Three million listeners a day conservatively. Uh, tens of millions a week on YouTube. Uh, millions of visitors, over a million a day to Infowars.com. About 600,000 a day to PrisonPlanet.com. We are able to do this because the people are starting to wake up and liberty lovers, not just in the U.S., but worldwide, are supporting this transmission. But you are tuning in, if you're a new listener, to the number one patriot, liberty, freedom, constitutionalist, pro-sovereignty, pro-America program in the world. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And you notice I didn't say conservative, because that's a term that doesn't mean anything today. As long as you're against the Democratic Party, it means you're conservative. You can be for banning guns. You can be for abortion. You can be for open borders. You can be for carbon taxes. You can be for banker bailouts. As long as you don't like the disgusting, degenerate Democratic Party, you're a conservative. Well, you know what? I don't like the disgusting Republican Party either. I am someone who wants freedom, and I'm not anybody's slave. And I know what's going on, and I'm angry about it, and I'm here to wake up my fellow humans. Whether they be black, white, Hispanic, Asian, old, young, whether they be from China, whether they be from Mexico, whether they be from Canada, whether they be from Germany, whether they be from Israel, whether they be from South Africa, I don't care where you're from. You could be in Inuit up in Alaska. I want you to have freedom. I want you to live long and prosper. I want your children to have a fair shake. I know what comes around goes around. For me to be free, you got to be free. I don't like oligarchs. I don't like monopoly men. I don't like bullies. I don't like thugs. I don't like globalists trying to set up a new dark age. And I'm angry about it. And I'm not going along with it. I'm red-blooded. And the people out there that don't like it better get used to it. Because being a man and standing up for freedom is back in style. I am nothing special if we were living back in 1776. It shows how domesticated and pathetic we've gotten that I'm something special today. Because what you're hearing is Americana 110%. And if you don't like it, you should move to North Korea. Ah, I am fired up. I'm ready to kick some collectivist globalist butt. Let me just stop right there. Mm. Sometimes, you know, I uh, go home Friday night and then over the weekend I'm out in public and I hear stories and I see news and I, things unfold that get me so upset that I am just absolutely boiling to get back in here in front of the radio. And we're going to do it today here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to break down the real society that we live under, exactly what we face and where we're going, and just give you a snapshot of the day's news. But here is just some notes that I wrote right before I went on air about an hour ago, just thinking about some of the points I want to be sure that we cover today. Number one, this is real. I'm going to get to that first in a moment. Number two, we have a corrupt oligarchy worldwide that has established world government and announced it while teaching police that it isn't happening and it's illegal to say a world government's been established. So it's a double speak right out of 1984. Criminal government and banks are now completely above the law. Lawlessness is now here by the ruling class who are completely insane and who actually seek to destroy the middle class and nouveau riche wealth. That's new wealth for folks that don't speak French. How a disinfo campaign works, what I call the hoax factory. We're going to look at one hoax and then expand it to others so you know some of the main plays they run. They don't run more than 15 of them generally. Yeah, you, folks watch football and get real good at fantasy football and things that actually don't take anywhere in life. I get into studying how the real controllers of the planet, <laughs> I, I, I study the plays they run. 
So we're going to be looking at that today because I'm an extremist. I'm a weirdo. I, I, I actually want to know how the world works. I actually, I actually want to be able to predict what's coming. I actually want to have, have freedom for my children. Can you imagine? I will just sit down and shut up and go along. Oh, but the problem is I read what the White House science czar wrote, how they're adding chemicals to our food and water to sterilize us and dumb us down. Eco-science. Oh, that's the book. It's public. It's online. Go read it. Oh, I, I know the cancer rates are up over 10,000% in children, over 3,000% in adults. Oh, I, I happen to know why they put uh, fluoride with a, what is it, a neutron missing? So it's basically acid. So you need calcium fluoride, a little bit of it. No, 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 they put fluoride with a uh, electron missing. That's what's missing. And it, it, it's acid. It's deadly poison. And if you stuck your hand in it, it'd eat the bone off. Uh, but the point is, I'm upset about eugenics. I'm upset that you've all heard about the government doing secret testing that's been declassified on little kids and black people and stuff like that. It's still all ongoing. It's not even secret now. They spray aluminum over our cities in a $5 billion a year program they just declassified. Oh, they're just now admitting it all, but does it matter? People are too busy looking at their iPads. They're too busy acting cool at the bar with the buddies. They're too busy, you know, getting your collagen injections and freaking out over your waistline to know that we more and more are being inserted into a matrix-like control grid system. So we're going to get into the hoax factory, and we've got a special report coming up at the start of the next hour. Agenda 21 and New York and London and San Francisco, Germany's passed a law that your home will be no bigger than, get this, 500 square feet. Bloomberg says that's too big. Uh, they want um, only a couple hundred, 200 to 300. Now, now, if you're a rich elitist, you're going to be given a waiver. But the rest of you, there'll be taxes forcing you into it. It's all official. And you don't understand. They're going to cut your resources off where you won't be able to afford anything but that. You'll pay more for that to the globalist. See, that's how the environmentalists work. They're, they're shutting down most of the development where I live in Austin, uh, north of here, uh, in uh, Round Rock and uh, everywhere else up that way. Um, Georgetown saying they found salamanders, which aren't even endangered. They're, they're subspecies. Uh, so it's kind of like you're saying dogs are extinct because one, one breed is, uh, but, but they're all the same species. So it's subspecies. And, and, and then they selectively take things off, off the rolls where you can't build on them and then force you with them in a domain to sell for pennies on the dollar. And then they turn around and build on it later. It's the same thing worldwide, just like Obama shuts down the power plants uh, that, are, that aren't owned by General Electric and a handful of other companies. Publicly, he shuts them down. Uh, and then gives them a waiver so their profits double. And then they're totally tax-exempt and pay zero tax. <laughs> but you do, you do, and they've got the giant 50 million people on food stamps and all the rest of it teaching them that anybody that's got a car and a house is rich and that they'd have something if you lived in, a, in something the size of a jail cell. Oh, yeah, they know, they know what they're doing, and all the big universities teach it. And uh, it's the new religion where they come up and henpeck you, you know, about the environment and how your car's too big or whatever. But they're not worried about GMO, cross species, ge genetic engineering, spreading to the entire biosphere wreaking havoc. They're not worried about toxic waste dumping or nuclear reactors blowing up. Real environmental issues are overfishing. No, 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 no. It's the carbon dioxide you exhale. And don't worry, they got a global tax to fund a global government, the official UN documents. And it doesn't matter if Congress won't approve it because Obama is just doing it. And so will Mitt Romney because they're bought and paid for by the same people, just like Congress wouldn't pass the Cybersecurity Act that even CBS News says is like Russian internet control and taxes and controls it. Oh, but Obama has an executive order now. Oh, he's going to sign it next week. But don't worry, Google and others have approved of it. Well, yeah, because it shuts down all their competition. And Google, as I told you a decade ago, it's now declassified, was set up by Incutel, the CIA and the NSA. It's a front company. Yeah, that's right. We'll be right back. Show. It's uh, Sunday. There's some fun ball games on and uh, a lot of fluoride tap water to drink. A lot of GMO uh, pizza to order. So what if in all the major studies that GMO crop, all the major GMO crops are this will happen to be sterilizing and giving cancer to the animals that eat it? Don't worry about that. In fact, don't even go look up GMO linked to uh, organ failure, increase in cancer, total sterility within three generations. 
you know, just say, oh, that's that crazy guy, Alex Jones. Well, you know, if you found out what I told you was true, you might get upset as well. So here is an example of uh, why I get so angry before I get into all this news, before I get to these special reports. Everywhere I go, people run up to me, walking through parking lots, you name it, and they say, listen, I got a story to tell you. My sister, my brother, or it's happening to them. And let's understand, these are well-to-do, in many cases, people dress nice, with good-looking families. I mean, they're not like, you know, looking like they're crackheads or something, which the system's already basically fed on by shipping the drugs in to begin with and pushing it. But the point is, we're gonna get to some of that later, government drug dealing in a moment. Yeah, the war on drugs isn't a failure, folks. It's going exactly as it was designed to. And they go, yeah, uh, my sister, you know, uh, she's 41 years old. Uh, you know, she's a you know, successful business manager, lives in Westlake. They always tell you that. These are good people. And, and you know, she went in to have her cesarean because they said she was, you know, old, so she needed it. No, they just get more money from you, okay? Uh, and uh, they did a routine drug test on her. They don't tell you when they're taking your blood. They're doing that and found some THC. That's the evil drug that's in marijuana. And, uh, and then the nurse poured the milk out in front of her because they wait till the baby's already born and then called the CPS to come take their kid. And it's all about making you feel guilty. And people tell me these stories. In some cases, they're like, and by the way, we don't even use marijuana. Oh, well, they don't tell you that in some cases over 30% of the time it's false positives or that police crime labs in every major city of the country, just here in Texas, San Antonio, Houston, Dallas, just type in their name, crime lab fraud, with their own police coming out and saying, yeah, the, the lab techs are ordered to frame people. I mean, you hear about the prosecutors all the time who knew somebody was innocent, but just wanted to have a perfect conviction rate, so they set you up. You can't trust the system, but, but, but here's the deal. CPS is five times, just department's own numbers, look it up, likely to abuse children physically seven times sexually. There is no more dangerous place in the world for children than in the hands of, let me see, people that go to college to take kids away from people. Gee, who do you think's gonna go try to get that job? Gee, uh, where they've got government immunity, they claim, and where they can have children privately uh, who are already in a bad situation, they're claiming, so no one can believe the child. And by the way, they abuse 69% nationwide average, just type in, over two-thirds of foster children on psychotropic drugs and antipsychotics, you'll get every article you can imagine under the known sun. Drugs, on average, seven drugs. So they put them on Ritalin, Prozac. We're talking two-year-olds now. When you cry for mommy, that's mental illness. Because now your special needs, they have a government shrink. In many cases, they don't even look at the kid, start putting them on the drugs to drug them out. And the kids die a lot of times. That's why some of it actually comes out. So they're going to put you in with an agency known to be filled with pedophiles, perverts, bounty hunters, you name it. They take the children, drug them till their teeth fall out. Oh, yeah, the doctors have gone public that work inside the system. They do medical experiments on them. That came out in New York a few years ago. Medical experiments on the little kids. Oh, yeah, you don't think they just stopped with Tuskegee injecting black men with syphilis. Or, or, or radiating foster children. You think all that stopped in the 80s? <laughs> it's going on bigger than ever. <clears throat> Again, this is a government that nerve gassed thousands of U.S. troops, killing them, killing at least hundreds of them in nerve gas studies with VX, Sarin, and others. This is a government that fed uranium and plutonium pills up until the 80s to the pregnant wives of GIs at base hospitals not to see what plutonium uranium pills do to a pregnant woman, to test army doctors to see if they'll kill people and kill their babies for the greater good in a test to then bring them up to form larger kill cadres above them. Are you listening to what I'm talking about here? Because I'm risking my life to bring you this information. The only reason I'm still alive is because they know if they kill me, it'll make all my information be underlined and highlighted. But they still might. And you know what? That's fine with me. I love life. I don't want to die. I'll never commit suicide. But I'm not afraid of dying. They got kids all over the world, these dungeon keepers. Government has become an envelope, a shell. Like a fiddler crab goes and gets a shell that isn't theirs. It's become a, 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 a shell. A shell that they just take on, a glove 
something they articulate. It's like government is a person that's been demon-possessed by corrupt people. That's what tyranny is. By the way, you guys are just pulling up the toxic AIDS drugs tested on healthy kids. Uh -uh, uh -uh. That was ABC News, NBC, they just showed. Type in pesticides tested on foster children until they die. And when the CPS finally had conscience, they were taking these little two, three, four, five-year-olds to these facilities in New York where Big Pharma was strapping them down and killing them. The children would beg for months while they were murdered. <laughs> the CPS people that went public, they got fired and the killing continues. <laughs> oh, but I'm an extremist for getting upset. I should just go along to get along. The government, it wants to be my friend. It, just like under Hitler and Stalin and Mao and Nero. It's so nice. But my founders said, don't trust government. Keep it totally small. It's incredibly murderous. And the University of Hawaii study, there are several others, it's the conservative one. It says government, non-military casualties, killed 262 million people in the 20th century. Some estimates are as high as 400 million. But let's just go with the... Um, Let's just go with the conservative one. By the way, if you're a radio listener, on screen I'm putting mainstream news up about little children chained down being given pesticide till they die. But it's the government, so it's humanitarian. I forgot, it's okay. You know, Hillary just apologized to Guatemala. For decades, they told the Guatemalan kids in the U.S. and U.N. programs, we're giving you shots so you don't get measles, mumps, and rubella. Really, they were giving them a shot of live Syphilis, <laughs> you know, give it a little kid syphilis. It just sends little microscopic worms into your brain that eat it. I mean, that's not bad. That's not wrong. I mean, come on. Shooting kids up with syphilis is good. Don't be an extremist. The government's got your best interest at heart. <sighs> oh, boy. So... Oh, these people constantly, everywhere I go around them go, oh, listen, listen, my kid was even at school. After school, I was going to be there. You know, they have an after-school program. He fell off. The school even admits they fell off the jungle gym and broke their finger there. But still, CPS came out and, and you know, there was some dog hair on the floor, even though they know this is, he broke his finger at the school, and, and they're trying to take my son. They're trying to take, because they've got a quota since Bill Clinton in 96, where they have to increase the amount of kids grabbed each year just to get the federal funds. So since Clinton was in, I saw the number like a year ago, you can look this up, they've more than doubled the number of children they have to grab each year. Oh, so there's just that issue. When you go to the hospital and they're asking you questions when you're having a baby, they're putting it in a health department CPS database. If you tell them you're having money trouble, they're going to take your kids. If you wafted some smoke, your husband was smelling, they're going to take your kids. And they're going to put them on a bunch of poisonous drugs and they're going to kill them if they can. Okay, this government is predatory. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, you're listening to the voice of, well, me, Alex Jones. We are live. It is the ninth day of September 2012 on this Sunday edition. And uh, I'm an extremist. Uh, it's been announced that foreign banks have conquered the U.S. in hundreds of publications from The Economist uh, to CNBC on television and online. Time Magazine, The Washington Post, uh, say that we're lucky foreign banks captured us and bought off the government and set up the national security state and the private Federal Reserve, and uh, now they're busy fully bankrupting us and bringing us into the nanny state uh, to fully domesticate us. Uh, and I'm supposed to just be excited about that and, and be watching football right now uh, and, you know, have my in-laws come live with me uh, and others uh, as the country goes bankrupt. We're all supposed to just, uh, you know, live like that. that that's... That's the new American dream. Uh, you know, when I go to Whole Foods, uh, half the magazines are how great it is to be poor, how austerity is good, how the fact that we're in a depression uh, is good to lower our carbon footprint, uh, but Al Gore won't lower his. Uh, you know, it's just everywhere. And I'm supposed to just be, hey, this is great. Because I know that we're under a eugenics-based global government the plan of which was developed in England in the 1850s, and I've read hundreds of books and made films and eat, drink, and sleep all this info, and I know they're poisoning our food and water and have all the documents and all the admissions, uh, and I'm just supposed to just shut up and think that's fine. You know, if what I was saying wasn't true, don't you know I'd be sued or arrested, knock on wood? But see, it's not. All you've got to do is go look into what I've claimed here today, and you're going to find the rabbit hole. And it's not speculative, any of it.
Oh, but you're not going to go look up if they're grabbing foster kids all over the U.S. and testing pesticides on them till they die. Little kids grabbed and murdered by the government. You're not going to look into that, are you? Because then you might have to do something about it, wouldn't you? Well, no, uh, maybe that's not the case. I heard a Time Magazine columnist on radio in Austin this week. Uh, maybe I'll have time to uh, get to that later, uh, Joel Stein. And uh, he was talking about how the Republicans are stupid because they hold up pictures of dead, bloody fetuses, and how he likes to look at the dead, bloody fetuses and wants there to be a beauty pageant of dead, bloody fetuses. And then people say, oh, we're, quote, liberals, which means control freak, mindless idiots at the top and, and, and bleeding heart fools at the bottom uh, who control reality. We set the, the definitions. We say it's not a baby, even if it's nine months old, and there's a line around the block to adopt the baby, but the mother doesn't know that through ignorance, so she has a third trimester abortion at nine months. They'll do it up to the day of the delivery, and that's not a baby. But if a woman has a miscarriage at six and a half months and the little child is a preemie and survives and lives, and then at six months old, someone goes into its crib and bashes its brains out with a hammer. Or let's say you have a six-month-old preemie then. Let's say it's seven months old now and someone goes in and bashes its brains out with a hammer as it lies there in its crib. You're going to go to prison, murder one, premeditated murder, and that's what that is. But see, I know they're killing a human. I know it's wrong. And I know that the system wants to make it all a joke. That's why it's so popular on mainstream television now to make fun of aborted babies. Oh, it's real popular. Now, you can just look up making fun of dead babies, making fun of abortions. And it's a, it's a Democratic Party staple. What despicable, slovenly, demonic people they are. We played that abortionist clip a few weeks ago where they're like, please let us adopt the babies. And he goes, are you going to adopt these ugly black babies? Uh, no, you're not going to adopt them. See, this is the attitude that humanity is ugly, that we're bad. So now they've got top bioethicists saying kill children up to age three. And, and, and top medical journals are going, that sounds reasonable. Yes, let's kill people up to age three. All right, I'm ranting, and I haven't even gotten into the news here. Uh, what type of news do I have here? Too big to jail. Wall Street executives unlikely to face criminal charges. That's what the Justice Department's saying. Uh, you think all the top Justice Department people have worked at the big firms and under these companies. All of them. All of them. All the major regulators. Of the five different regulators over uh, SEC and the rest of them that regulate the stock market, Three of them worked under John Corzine at Goldman Sachs when he was the head. And then the other one, because uh, the, 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 there were five, three of them worked at Goldman Sachs directly under him. One of the others worked for him at MF Global. And then the other one, it worked for J.P. Morgan. So, so uh, we did a report on this a few months ago. He takes $2 billion of people's private accounts. He gets caught lying to Congress, and they're saying... Nothing's going to happen to him. <laughs> See, because it's now a pure criminal group at the top. They've brought in all their people. They've got their criminals at every level. And now they're starting to take people's houses that, the, that, that, that they never even had the deed to. It's one thing when Bank of America, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan Chase, and others take houses where, where – the people had paid it off, but the derivative had been sold over and over again, the paper on the house. And so another company claims they own it and comes and takes it, and the courts uphold that. But it's another thing entirely now where they just outright take them. You know, that's making the news today. Wells Fargo mistakenly cleans out retired couples' home twice. Twice. This isn't mistaken. This is psych warfare to just get you used to it where it happens so many times, nothing's even done, nobody gets in trouble. You know federal courts, as well as the states, have been ruling that uh, they can have robo-signing and take houses. That They're taking houses now. Just look up a Florida case. Type in uh, Bank of America gets foreclosed on. Where they're taking houses. Now listen to this that have been paid off with cash for more than 10 years that there was never even a note with a bank on. And the people have pure documentation and the court still takes their house because Bank of America said, and then a year later, the people sued Bank of America and a judge rightfully ordered, rightfully 
ordered, ladies and gentlemen, that they give the money back on the million dollar plus house, Bank of America wouldn't do it. So then they sent deputies in or constables in to take the money directly out of the till at Bank of America. Oh yeah, Bank of America comes and takes your house because they lie to a judge? How about they get taken? See, that's how this works, ladies and gentlemen. They're not above the law if we hold them accountable. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me just, I'm running out of time here. We're already 40 minutes into this show and it'll be gone before we know it. Uh, there's so much to get to. I wanna make the point, this is real. I wanted to make the point about the, the uh, Child Protective Services and how they're the most dangerous group out there and how they use marijuana now to take people's kids. You know now when the police pull you over and find any marijuana, you got a two-year-old, they take them. Oh, you're using hard drugs. Even though marijuana is nothing compared to Prozac and all the stuff they push on people. Even though the government's been caught bringing in most of the drugs so they can have it illegal, they, they make it illegal to jack up the price in a black market. Stop being so naive. Government and a bunch of uh, bootleggers were the ones that shut down their competition that outlawed alcohol. Their profits more than tripled over the next decade. Look up history. Don't be so naive, folks. This is how it gives government an excuse to get into your life. I want to get into how a disinfo uh, campaign works when we come back in the next segment, the hoax factory. And then we're going to start the next hour with an Agenda 21, exactly what that means and the code words they're using in your town, your city, to under global government zone and use zoning laws to tax you, regulate you, shut down your business, take over your farm. It's absolutely hellish. And then we will also get into what no due process means. In fact, I want to cover that now in the little bit of time we have before we go to break here. When there's no due process, when there's no checks and balances, government and the government class becomes a pure mafia and gets away with whatever it wants, down to literally bureaucrats demanding to have sex with your wife. It happened in East Germany. It happened in ancient Rome. Okay. There is no end to what criminals will do when you let government become a machine for them. They will take it over, they will destroy you, they will send out swarms of agents to eat out your substance. That's the Declaration of Independence, by the way. Okay, it's happening again, it happens everywhere else. This country and this world has cancer. It's called the New World Order. Okay, let me now settle down a bit. We're 47 minutes in, that's kind of out of the gates for me. And I want to walk through this because I sit here studying this stuff calmly for days, then get on air and just explode because I'm angry about it. If I catch somebody breaking in my house, I get mad. I catch somebody messing with my kids, I get mad. I catch somebody taking my liberties, I get mad. I've still got my basic instincts, ladies and gentlemen. And we need to have the, the, the idea of liberty spread like a counter contagion. The globalists are the contagion. We are the answer. We are the white blood cells that go in there, if you don't know what a white blood cell is, folks, that's what, that's what pus is. And I mean, that's why when you got an infection, you see the pus, that's, that's the good stuff there, destroying the bacteria. It means the enemy invaded there, and your troops are in there blasting the daylights out of it. Thomas Jefferson said, you better protect the jewel of liberty. Even if you know the jewel of liberty and fight for your rights, you'll probably have them taken. If you don't fight for them, you will be a slave. You will be overrun. You will be conquered. Please, ladies and gentlemen, I look at the public. They're childlike. They're domesticated. They're like a guinea pig that thinks it's got a happy life and thinks the people that bring it food love it until they take it out of the cage and feed it to a boa constrictor. We've got to get more sophisticated and realize how much trouble we're in. And realize the minions of the system, they're following false compartmentalized narratives or roles they've been given. We've got to give them the larger breakdown so they go, oh, I do see the, the larger image now and understand how they're being manipulated. Now, I want to move quickly into this now. About three weeks ago, four weeks ago at Infowars.com, PrisonBunner.com, we, we scroll through the different federal purchase websites where they have to put stuff out for bids and tell you what they bought after they get the bids. It's fbo.gov index. And we can show people watching on prisonplanet.tv actual document cam of this. Commercial lead training ammunition. 
and this goes through uh, the different uh, purchases by the Department of Homeland Security. Now, last year they bought 250 million rounds. That was the biggest one-time purchase in domestic law enforcement history. This year they bought 450 million rounds. That raised eyebrows. Then they bought 750 million. That was a month ago. Since then they've bought over 50 million more. They're arming every agency out there. So all we did, this is what journalists could do, you know, if you even if you don't care about freedom and you want to know why Infowars.com or PrisonPlanet.com are now the biggest alternative news sites out there, uh, except for the Drudge Report that's way above us. It's its own animal. It's because we do old-fashioned reporting. I kind of rant and rave and stuff, but I've got all these journalists that work under me, okay? I kind of get people's attention, and my writers show you the information. <clears throat> but the point is, is that we start reporting on this, and it becomes a big national story. Why has 1.4 billion rounds of ammo been purchased? And you can just type in 450 million rounds of ammo into a search engine. You'll get news about it mainstream news. You type in 750 million rounds, you'll get the news from a month ago. This, but we point out, hey, they're getting armored vehicles, they're preparing for civil unrest, here's the army manual. In fact, they're showing a mainstream news article right there on screen. That's Financial Times of London. Okay? Department of Homeland Security is buying 450 million new bullets. Uh, that was in March. I told you, November they bought 250 million. In uh, March they bought 450 million. And in early August, they bought 750 million. They've bought over 50 million since then and then classified it. So we're not learning anything new. How do you spin that if you're the corporatist paid off press? Because at first they were reporting on it after we reported on it, like it was no big deal. Okay, but then when people started going, well, wait, that's 1.4 billion rounds of ammo. That's like five rounds for every person in the country. That's like seven rounds for every person that's of able body. Uh, and they said, oh, it's just target practice. We're like, those are hollow point. You don't use that. Oh, yes, you do. Well, anybody who shoots, no, you don't. So it goes on and on and on. How do you spin that? And again, we're flashing mainstream news articles up here as we speak. If you're a radio listener, go look it up. This is back in August 17. Agencies tap down speculation over hollow point ammo purchases. The Infowars.com report. And, and they go on to say that our report broke it down. Drudge report picked it up. It went viral. Okay. How do you deal with that? Well, that was that was three weeks ago or two weeks ago. Here it is now, September 4th, right through to today. Hundreds of articles per day saying I am a fraud. Okay? Hundreds. Hundreds. Because they know we got your attention. Associated Press, Social Security buys 174,000 hollow point bullets. Internet bursts with conspiracy theories. On and on. I have all these articles. Huffington Post, you name it. We have a newscast of the reporter attacking me we're going to go to here in just a minute. Hundreds of articles saying, oh, Alex says they're arming for war. All they bought was 174,000 rounds for Social Security, and that's for their fraud division. So what do you do, everybody? This is designed for people they know who aren't paying attention, okay? We break a big story, which any idiot could have done, but th there are no real journalists hardly left, that, hey, why are they buying 1.4 billion rounds of ammo in 11 months? Why are they buying armored pillboxes? Why are they setting up checkpoints? Why do they have military drills nationwide admitting it's for domestic collapse? Our articles talk about that. They go and cherry pick one purchase order. And, and go, what's the big deal? It's not for martial law or for war with you. It's only 174,000 rounds. And they have the deans of law enforcement schools saying this is irresponsible. It's normal. That's only 600 rounds per officer in the uh, Social Security Administration. They take 1.4 billion and say, what's the big deal? It's 174,000 rounds. They take one tiny part of that. It's one of the latest purchases. And, and, and then say, oh, Jones at Infowars.com and Matt Drudge of DrudgeReport.com, they're making a big deal out of this when it's 174,000 rounds. Folks, that's how dumb they think you are. That's why I'm so frustrated. It'd be like if you walked into your house and uh, somebody had your wife tied up raping them and you, and you went to get your gun to, and they said, oh, sir, she asked me to tie her down and I'm not raping her. You're like, well, you got her clothes off. You know, you're, you're having sex with her. She's, she's crying. Uh, no, no, don't be a conspiracy theorist, sir. She wants it. You know, 
Again, this is the mind game. That's why I'm jumping up and down going, wake up, wake up, wake up. They do this constantly. This is their favorite trick. You got 1.4 billion rounds of ammo. Articles with the Army manuals admitting re-education camps, FEMA camps, with links to the Army.mil. It's getting big national news. I go on Coast to Coast AM and cover it. It's getting really big. And now... Every newspaper in the country that I've just spot checked, I mean, it's hundreds a day for two weeks straight, says it's 174,000. Alex Jones, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And we got a newscast coming up I'm going to play that's a, that's a compilation of newscast saying we're nuts, we're kooks, we're bad, we're despicable, we don't live on planet Earth. It's 174,000 rounds, and if you divide that up with federal law enforcement, it's only 600 apiece, and what's our big deal? And then you're sitting there knowing that it's designed for a arrested development, zombie-like, dumbed-down, just domesticated, believing anything, poor person. And you want to wake them up. You want to tell people that when they go to the hospital, it's run by the state and federal government who want to get as many kids as they can because they can get $500,000 for a black-haired, blue-eyed girl. They can get three hundred grand, two hundred and fifty grand for a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl. That it's a whole racket. They're too naive to believe you till it happens to them. They're going to plant the THC on you to take your kid. It's major cash. My dad told me, son, when I was 16 in Dallas, don't sign the organ donor card. And I said, why? And he goes, I've been told by doctors and hospitals, my dad's a physician, that they don't save people that are savable because they're getting kickbacks. I said, dad, I don't believe you. But I still didn't sign it. And later it came out on 60 Minutes, they're killing people to get their organs. I was once 16 or 15 going to get my license and naive. I'm not naive now. Okay? Stop being naive. It's going to get us all hurt. It's 1.4 billion rounds, not 174,000. It's 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion. 1.4 billion. That's how dumb they think you are. And I'm talking, I'm talking hundreds of articles a day, folks. I'm so busy not even following us in the news, I didn't even really know. I was like, yeah, a few weeks ago and this week, I started looking. I started looking on Google. Some days they've had 500 articles saying we lied to people and, and that, and the way they lie is, well, it's no big deal. They're saying they're building up for an emergency. No, they're not. I mean, it's 174,000 rounds. They lie by omission, knowingly, across the media. They're collaborators selling us out to tyranny. Pathetic, mindless idiots. I'm going to play the clip. Coming up. I am fired up. Get you out of your trance. Wake up. All right, I got a bunch of news I need to cover, and I got that news piece I want to air when we come back to the next segment where... The media, and they do this on hundreds of different issues, builds a straw man rather than actually face what someone has said or done. You just change the story and then apply it to who you're talking about. I'm like, hey, they're, they got all the troops. They're preparing for martial law. Here's the Army manual, links to Army.mil, 1.4 billion bullets, hundreds and hundreds of giant black armored vehicles, thousands of tanks being pre-deployed. All this is being admitted. And it gets finally breaks through, becomes a big national story, and they're like, what's the big deal? It's 174,000 rounds of ammo, Alex. Well, gee, I heard this bullet story. Turned out it was 174,000 rounds. Yeah, you know them conspiracy theorists. It's just like, oh, my gosh. I want to give the number out because I will take calls some at the bottom of the hour, um, specifically on this issue. I want to hear your take on media hoaxes, like they've been taking thousands of homes I know of without deeds, thousands where it was totally paid off and it's pure fraud. It's not like they sold it over and over again and you're not really in foreclosure, but they put you into foreclosure and then they kind of halfway cheat you. I mean, the house is paid for and they take it. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is not an accident. It's been going on for about a decade. That's what I mean. We're, be we're being robbed everywhere. And it makes me so angry to have all of this going on. I've had enough of it. It makes my blood boil. I can't stand it. I'm not that smart. I can't believe the average people I look at are so incredibly stupid. We'll, we'll give the number out actually at the start of the next segment. I'm not going to give it out right now. I'm going to give it out when we start the next segment.
Look at this. Possible lawsuit over Aurora movie shooting targets the owner. And they're saying they should have had security there. And, and then that's going to force. That's why you can't have diving boards, can't have metal slides. It's the nanny state. But government can have drones kill you without due process and put fluoride in your water. But for everyone's safety, even though statistically it's one of the lowest, you know, most, most less dangerous things out there statistically is a mass shooter. Oh, uh, you better have cops in the theater. You better have metal detectors. You better have body scanners, which is what the TSA has always been planning. That's CBS out of Denver. Now they're talking about suing them because the police got there in three minutes. The police don't have to protect you. They don't have any statutory liability. They are there under statute to find you once you've committed a crime so that you can be brought to the People's Court of Justice. But it gets worse. The, the bureaucrats don't want the police to even be able to, uh, uh, to you know, just do their job. They want to claim you're not allowed to protect yourself and that the police are going to do it. But then they're not liable to protect you. But So the police aren't liable to protect you, but the movie theater is. How about you're liable to protect yourself? I got five people work here with concealed carry. And I don't need a concealed carry to have my 37 right here with me. You think I'm scared of somebody coming around here? You think I'm scared of somebody coming to my house? My house looks like in uh, Commando when you go in Schwarzenegger's gun closet. That's about what I got. <laughs> oh, man, thank God I'm red-blooded. Thank you, Lord, that I was not born castrated and that I didn't come from a family of jellyfish that lay supine on their back worshiping as little sycophantic minions at the scrofulous, vestigial breast of the New World Order whore. Excuse me, I'm just in a really bad mood right now. <sighs> I got to settle down. I tell you, it's just local coffee I drink. I think that's part of it. <laughs> the best coffee in the known galaxy. You know why? Because it's not the type of bean that has the high even ca uh, caffeine content that makes you get all hyped. It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a light roast. I, I'm learning the science of these. Actually, that just pushes me over the edge. I'm already pretty wound up. Uh, we've got uh, federal government may finally recognize 9-11 cancer link. Say attorneys of survivors. Oh, like we need the known criminals 11 years later to tell us what we already knew. I, I mean, oh, those buildings are full of asbestos and there's five feet of dust on the ground. And people have nosebleeds if they breathe one second. Uh, oh, government, you say it's safe? Oh, well, let me just not wear a mask because you said so. Because I'm going to trust you. Uh, we're going to get into all that, too. We're coming back. Stay with us. All right, if you just joined us uh, here today on this live Sunday transmission, I like to expose media hoax. You know, they get on the national news every year before school and say, it's the law, you'll go to jail if you don't give your children inoculations. There is no law. It's a total fraud. And I sit there to parents going, there is no law. And they go, no, there's no way the school's lying on the news. And I go, okay. Go type in vaccine waiver to your state. Comes up and they go, and it says it's not even a law. This is a waiver to a policy, and I don't even have to do this waiver. They're like, well, they lied to me. I go, yeah, go in and ask for the waiver, and they'll say it doesn't exist again because they're trained liars. <laughs> We've had such a criminal government for so long now, it finally re re reaches a flashpoint where the crooks just do whatever they want. I've got articles where bureaucrats and, and, and city inspectors are taking people's houses, where cops are robbing people, uh, where uh, city employees are running red lights hundreds of times. The red light camera show, I've got that in my stack. But that's nothing compared to big mega banks <coughs> robbing people's private accounts now. I'm seeing cases every week where they're taking people's private bank accounts uh, they're taking gold coins, 1933 and before, claiming that there was a government confiscation executive order by Roosevelt in 33, which there was. My grandfather owned the first Chevy dealership in Dallas. He didn't turn his in, by the way. Uh, they, you turn it in for paper money, and then they ship the gold offshore. They're now confiscating those, uh, what, St. Gaudens, 1933. This couple had some worth, worth $80 million that they found in a safety deposit box of family. That's in the news. I mean, this, this government is so criminal, and you're laying down to it, lets them take over. Oh, man, we're in trouble. Now, earlier I was talking about, no exaggeration, hundreds of articles per day, 
because Google minimizes them. If you see like 50 articles a day, just put in the headline, you'll find it's duplicated. When there's an Associated Press article, it's in over a thousand newspapers on average, thousands, thousands of TV stations run it. So this is in every paper in the country I've seen, including the local paper where I live, I saw it. And the Washington Post carried it as well, Detroit Free Press, LA Times. The horrible conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, you can go read it, Social Security buys 174,000 hollow point bullets, internet bursts with conspiracy theories. And I'm going to play a newsy uh, compilation of radio and TV news pieces uh, where this uh, Lotha lady calls me a conspiracy theorist and the Daily Caller, but she's, but she's quoting our articles, Daily Caller's quoting us, and, and, and says we don't know what planet we live on. Now, remember, 1.4 billion rounds of ammo have been purchased. That, that, that was in the Financial Times of London and the Daily Mail and the Associated Press. But they reported it after we reported it like it was no big deal. When people got upset about it, they came out and built a straw man. When you can't address someone on what they're actually saying or doing, you create something fake they didn't really say or a piece of what they said to make it deceptive. Because one article we did had links to different agencies, and it was 174,000 rounds in one purchase on top of this by the Social Security Administration. So they made the whole controversy about 174,000 rounds, not the 1.4 billion, the checkpoints, the mobile command centers, the wheeled tanks, the regular tanks, the Bradley fighting vehicles being delivered to cities, the drones, all of it. The Army manuals admitting their preparations for collapse in martial law. That's big news. So what do you do when people finally, talk show host around the country, actually picked up our story, the Drudge Report did and others, and said, wow, this is real. Why are they buying 1.4 billion? Well, you just, you just turned around and say, oh, it's 174,000 rounds. They did this with drones a few months ago. The 30,000 drones the FAA has said they're going to fund. The, the, the arming of them, they came out and said, oh, Alex Jones at InfoWars.com said these drones over this Kansas were, were drones. They were man Cessnas spying on farmers. But then our article had all these states where they were using unmanned drones. They just build a straw man, build a straw man. So here's the newscast we're going to analyze and then come back with other news in your calls. Here they are making fun of us, and this is just one of hundreds of reports on TV as well. So many, I can't even count them all. Making fun of us and lying to their viewers with a straw man. This should make you so angry. Here it is. The Social Security Administration is getting unloaded on after a recent purchase of nearly 200,000 rounds of ammunition. Why does the Social Security Administration need bullets? An agency that provides benefits to 56 million retirees, disabled workers, widows, and children, why are they stockpiling ammunition? The agency says its 300 agents carry guns and made close to 600 arrests last year. It says the ammunition is used in training, but as KQV points out, the purchase is scaring some people. It didn't take long for conspiracy theories to fly after the Social Security Administration posted a notice it was buying 174,000 hollow point bullets. One such theorist, and likely the only one as outlandish, wrote in the Daily Caller, the hollow point bullets are the first step in a deadly government takeover. We are led to believe that they will be used only in an emergency to counteract and control civil unrest. Good pause. Potentially each hollow I love how they try to not quote us, the AP and all of them did. That's our quote in the caller. That's Paul Watson's writing. Let's continue. This much ammunition can't be just for training. There aren't that many weapons and shooters in the U.S. to fire it. Perhaps it is to be used to arm illegal immigrants. All right, let's stop right okay. there. I mean, the White House already armed the illegals with 20,000 guns, ammo, and hand grenades to blame the Second Amendment. Uh, we already have been covering this. We're talking about the 1.4 billion rounds of ammo. We also said, are they sending it to the Muslim groups that NATO's arming? It turns out they've been doing uh, See, but they take it all to make it sound outlandish. Here it is. So back here on Earth, as the Daily Beast puts oh. it, hollow point bullets are standard for many training centers, and the SSA makes similar requests every year. The site notes. It the pause. Truth turns yeah, we pointed out that almost no one uses ammo that costs four times as much. The type they have is even more, most expensive you can get. You don't use that at a shooting range. You use target ammo, full metal jacket. But again, they spend that. This is, this is what they do, and this is across the board. They are preying on you like you're stupid. We believe you're smart and talk to you like adults. Here it is. To be so much less interesting than the paranoid fantasy. Ah. There will never be any end to this sort of thing as long as Obama is president.
The SSA contends the jobs of the officers are dangerous. All of the ammunition is needed, and almost all of it will be used on the firing range. For Newsy, I'm Carissa Lathan, Multiple Sources, The Real Story. Yeah, multiple sources. So she gets TV and radio reports, and then takes our reports out of context from another report, and then regurgitates this. And, and this was done all over the country. ABC News, NBC News, CBS News. Even though they'd all done earlier reports three weeks ago off our first reports, where we went and said, wow, 1.4 billion rounds. So what did they do? They, they first reported on the 1.4 billion in pieces. You know, the 750, the 450, the 250. They reported on all those. You can type those in and find them. But then when people got upset, they went back and said, okay, we'll blame it on Alex Jones, and we'll say 174,000, and we'll have the head of police agency saying, we need, a, we need that, we need 174, that's not too many. Oh, we use hollow points at the shooting range, yeah, that's what we use. See, that's what they think of you. They think you're dumb. Here's the toll-free number. I want your take on this and more. First-time callers today, 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-2539. Paul Watson did a report on this. I went and dug up the info on it. We collaborated on it. That is, in the last 11 months, since last November, I guess it's less than 11 months, 10 and a half months, since last November, 1.4 billion rounds. That is conservatively 10 times, because you can go back to the previous year and the year before that, 10 times what domestic, quote, law enforcement has ever bought. 10 times. And our article, again, had the Army links with the Department of Defense admitting they're operating domestically. In fact, that was in the news. The ACLU covered it last week. They're now using the Army to list peaceful protesters as, quote, low-level terrorists at the DNC and arrested peaceful protesters and asked the courts to hold them, saying protesting is now terrorism. It's on the ACLU website. You can't make this up. Folks, you cannot make up how much trouble we're in. Okay, and again, this is complex issues, and they, and, and they know it's complex, so they manipulate you. We have, you know, Wired Magazine, Associated Press, you name it, about drones being used and being armed nationwide and being used to spy on citizens and, and to arrest people in North Dakota, you name it. And then they just come out and say, Alex Jones says in Kansas that these planes spying on farmers were drones. They weren't. They were, they were the EPA in Cessna spying on farmers. Our article said they're already spying on farmers here and now they're using drones. And they just said we were lying to people when we were right. They are threatened by us because we do our job. We'll be right back. Yeah, we're evil. We actually quote the founding fathers. We actually try to follow what they said because it made perfect sense. The more you learn, the smarter you understand those men and women were. And I am here to defend freedom. I am here to go 110% right into the face of the globalist. Whatever may come, I am committed. And let me tell you, that's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to know you're doing the right thing. It's a good thing to be informed. It's a good thing to know who your enemy is as well. All right, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to go to your phone calls, but I was uh, getting into the hoax that has been run. And speaking of hoaxes, uh, I want to get into Agenda 21 right now and a report by Melissa Melton, uh, one of the great reporters we have here at the InfoWars Command Center here in Austin, Texas. We now have nine reporters and anchors and researchers on top of the rest of the crew, and that's because the broadcast has been growing, exploding, and uh, we are taking the increased capital that comes in and expanding the operation in the face of the new world order, because I'm not going to sit here and meet tyranny with half measures. It's got to be an all-in commitment that I was just discussing. When we come back from the break, I will start uh, going to your phone calls interspersed with a ton of other really big news uh, concerning government takeover of the Internet, taxation, police state, big news on the economy. That is all coming up. Uh, but uh, covering Agenda 21, that is a U.N. law, a global treaty agreement through UNESCO that our country has signed on to at the State Department level. It doesn't matter if Congress has refused the different treaties, the Carbon Tax Treaty, the Copenhagen Treaty, uh, the uh, stuff they've been promoting, the, the Durban Agreement, 
uh, they they have officially shot down all these agreements except the one that George Herbert Walker Bush signed on to in 1992. And at that meeting uh, in Rio, they called for a post-industrial world, a post-industrial America and Europe to bring us to our knees. It's not for the environment. In fact, you pay for carbon taxes, for transportation, for your home. They get rid of cars. They make only use bikes. You pay to the offshore banks that are exempt from the taxes and regulations, and they still live in their big palaces and fly around in their helicopters. Because they're billionaires. They can pay the taxes. It's designed. That's why the third world said no at Copenhagen three years ago. They wouldn't let them see the treaty. They just said, vote for it, then you can see it. This is in the news. And then Lord Moncton was there, and he got ferreted a copy of it. They later admitted that was the treaty. Uh, and uh, you know, they're at Copenhagen for the carbon taxes, and it was right at double. It wasn't double. It was like one percentage point below double the taxes on the third world that there'd be on the first world. So they told the third world, yeah, the rich Europe, rich J uh, Japan, rich Canada, U.S., Australia, you're going to get their money. We're going to build you up. But really, this is all the commission uh, on population that the British uh, government came out with in 49. That got adopted in the State Department Memorandum 200, in 73 that then became agenda 21 in 1992 I mean, i'm giving you if you're a listener write this down look it up I'm giving you the entire track of this criminal if you're a, a police investigator out there and you were taught some basic investigative skills go write down what i'm saying go look it up the, 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 all this is hidden in plain view but my point is is that this is a way to turn off all our resources charge us more for less charge us more for water for less water, charge us more for our houses for less. And then once you're bankrupt, forcing you into these new homes, subsidizing you a little bit if you'll do what they want. They've set up an Agenda 21 neighborhood at the old airport here in Austin, subsidizing people if they'll get into this system. Then they roll it out and force everyone onto it. Home inspections, banning gardens, and it's all claimed to be environmental, but it's not. It's about a power grab. It's about a prison. Melissa Melton went out on the streets of Austin, Texas, and actually found some people that want to live in a jail cell style home to save the earth so Al Gore can have 15 houses. Uh, here it is. I'm Melissa Melton reporting for Infowars.com. As Agenda 21, the United Nations plan to take control of the world from the local level up grows across America under the guise of the Green Movement. Our national sovereignty, our personal freedom, and our very way of life is under attack. What is, the, what is Agenda 21 for new listeners? Why is it important? And what are the new big developments? I mean, is it safe to say the battle is joined right now, Rosa? For people who don't know what Agenda 21 is, it's basically, it's not what is Agenda 21, it's almost what isn't. It is the blueprint, it is the action plan to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all minerals, all construction, all animals, all means of production, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. It is a completely comprehensive plan, it's global, and it's implemented locally. Agenda 21 highlights include the destruction of the family unit in the name of sustainable development, with people being forced to live in tight, compact cities and high-rise stack em and pack em apartments no bigger than this 16 by 16 foot space. I decided to ask people what they thought about the UN's plan to get people on the grid. So would you live in a house no bigger than the size of this square? Uh, it feels like a jail cell, a cell. no way. <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. Well, you know, it depends on what my options would be. If this was the only option, I, I'm sure it would be living under a bridge. You need one at least twice this size. This would be your entire house? Yeah, three times as big, really. <laughs> yeah, I've lived in one about this size, and it was like uh, being an animal in a box or something. Would you do it for the good of the earth? Maybe. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes, I would. You would? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Agenda 21? I haven't. No. 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 Agenda 21 is a plan we've been signed on to with the United Nations where we give up our property rights and freedom and be forced to live in apartments no bigger than this square. What do you think about that? I think that's terrible. It sounds kind of like. Chinese foreign policy or interior policy regarding 
their house and how they're controlling all aspects of your life. I don't think it sounds fair. Oh, wow. <laughs> This map, entitled Simulated Reserve and Corridor System to Protect Biodiversity, illustrates how the UN's Agenda 21 plan would work in the United States. Under this takeover, all personal property rights would cease to exist. The red zone, the map's majority, will be mandated for little to no human use. The yellow zones are buffer zones for highly regulated use. Only in the scant green areas is any normal human use allowed. Black dots are the dense megacities, where transportation will be tightly controlled, freedom will be restricted, and people will be packed in like sardines, living in tiny 275 square foot units amounting to little more All right. than jail cells. Great All job, name of Melissa Melton. Melton. The full video report is up at Infowars.com right now on the front page, InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com and of course Info at PrisonPlanet.tv along with thousands of other reports. We'll be right back with your phone calls and a ton of other key news. We are the resistance and we will defeat tyranny. All right, I'm gonna go to some of your phone calls ahead of some financial news from around the world that is uh, pretty, pretty scary quite frankly, but being aware of this can turn it around. But I do just want to say this. Uh, I get worked up about this because I feel desperate about it. I know I'm right. It's so much worse than I could even say because it's such a complex issue. It'd be kind of like if you were an expert diesel mechanic and somebody brought their diesel car in and they said, explain to me why you know, the turbo has to be replaced on the turbo diesel. And you're like, did you go to school for two years to learn this? I mean, have you worked with, you know, diesels for, say, 15 years? Uh, I'm not insulting your intelligence. I'm sure you're better at whatever you do than I am. But I cannot explain to you, you know, why in layman's terms. It's blown. It's burnout. It's ruined. It would cost more to fix it, the parts per capita. Do I need to explain assembly line theory to you? That, that it's easier to have a big run of things manufactured than to fix something by itself. We have to replace the turbo on your turbo diesel. It, it, okay, it'll cost you twice as much. Now, now, a moral person has to do that. An immoral person would just say, okay, you want to have the turbo diesel repaired. All right, that'll be uh, $10,000. We're going to send it off to have it repaired for you. And that's kind of what society does. People that know what's going on, I'm not the only person. It's not rare to know what's going on. Most people that know what's going on, they go, oh, these people don't know what's going on. I'm going to take advantage of them. And that's what makes me mad is people taking advantage of folks. Nowadays, we're such a corrupt society, it's like cute and funny to lie and take advantage of people. And I see examples of it all the time. Like that's how you're supposedly professional is you, if you know how to lie to people. You know what, I'm not lying to anybody. I'm not lying to myself, I'm not lying to you. It's hard to lie. You gotta keep track of stuff. I don't have to keep track of jack squat but the facts. And, 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 and lies destroy civilizations. We're losing checks and balances. We're losing due process. We, when the government says they can secretly disappear you, or when the NSA admits they spy on everybody. Remember me 15 years ago telling you they were spying on everybody and describing how we knew they were? Now it's exactly what we said. Because it was all there in the infrastructure. It was all there in the legislation. The truth is none of this stuff's really hidden. These globalists go out though, and they're not like one guy like Hitler or Stalin who just goes out and runs the whole show. Because sometimes those guys can be killed or taken out or you know whatever, and then things can change for better or worse. This is a, I guess they call it an oligarchy. And throughout history, it's oppressive predatory groups that wanna make people poor so they can control them and, and, and kinda hand out chicken feed to them. It's a form of domestication. And the elites always have disdain for people under these systems, and these systems tend to stagnate and fall apart after a while. They're not good systems. 
truly virtuous elite are so confident they want to build everybody up because they know no one's going to even be able to challenge them, even if they're not a truly virtuous person. And they also understand a feeling of their family and of a larger continuum. And they want their great, 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 great grandchildren to be successful and to be in, an, in a golden age. And you get that only occasionally through centralized power with a philosopher king. There have been kings that have come along who, the history books say for ego, but generally it's more than that, who do establish real universities and, and establish real systems of thought and actually try to empower people. And that's the only time a big state actually does anything good. The problem is those things always get taken over down the road by their great-grandsons or granddaughters or great-granddaughters who are nuts and marrying their horses and doing human sacrifice and putting makeup on, declaring themselves God. I don't care if it's the Aztecs, the Romans, the Babylonians, the Chinese. Every culture gets these loons in control. Fifth generation, tenth generation, spoiled, rotten loons. And that's kind of what we've got today. And it, it's, it's really dangerous because they've got powerful scientists, powerful tech companies, powerful researchers in the military industrial complex working for them who are with precision, coldly, like mercenaries, wanting the money and status, giving these wicked inbred families incredible power that no elite has ever had before. Race-specific bioweapons, uh, seventh-generation atomic weapons, antimatter weapons. You didn't know the Air Force admits they've got antimatter weapons? They've leaked it on purpose 10 years ago. San Francisco Chronicle, Associated Press, Reuters, you can look it up. The point is, is that we're in trouble. I mean, the global elite can't control themselves. All they do is obsess on controlling us. The FBI is rolling out nationwide. It's already in place. They're making the announcement, FBI begins installation of $1 billion face recognition software into private systems, you name it. Facebook, which is set up by the CIA, is selling them all your face prints. They're going to give you discounts if they run your background and tell you what to buy with face deals. Everything's going to be tracked. Uh, it, it is so hellish. They're, they're already outlawing the swap meets, the trade shows, uh, the lemonade stands. Uh, Louisiana two years ago passed laws, no cash and secondhand transactions. They've already hired the Infragar Stasi force. My crew, Linda West, who's only been here about a week and a half, worked for TV, radio, run a major newspaper in a business suit, professional looking lady, was downtown outside of Starbucks talking to people about, uh, you know, their take on different things. It was, it was mainstream stuff. I think it was, uh, the report's coming up this week. It's not done yet. And it, it was just what, you know, they thought about the government, the state of things. And a guy in a three-piece suit says, pulled out a camera and said, I'm taking pictures of you. Wait right here. And he called the cops on him. And the cops pulled up because he was an InfraGuard guy. And we're like, what are we supposed to do? Even have some of this on tape, folks. In America, there are people walking around that think a woman in a business suit with a guy with a $20,000 camera, a woman in a black business suit, you know, who looks like, uh, you know, I mean, reporters on Fox News, you know, a blonde in a business suit is sitting there and the guy comes out and starts taking pictures because they, they say, well, what are the questions about? Oh, it's just about what your take is on the state of America, well, you know, the state of the government, just your view of things. He's like, hold on, I'm calling the police on you. They tried to recruit my dad, folks. They recruited, they tried to recruit all the dentists he knows to spy on their patients. Not for Al-Qaeda, just what are your patients doing and saying? They're training your kids to spy on you in public schools. They've got RFID chips around their necks now. Folks, it's all happening. It's all Department of Defense run. The country was taken over. And they've got all these collaborators with them who, who, who already think it's to the point where you're gonna be arrested for your speech. And it already is happening now where protesters are being arrested. They're saying protesting is an act of terrorism and the Department of Defense runs it. And these guys are so eager that he wanted cops to come and the cops pull up and are like, but they still came. These guys have their little car. They think nobody knows. They go to little FBI meetings and they sit around and notice the mission isn't Al Qaeda anymore that the Western governments publicly run overseas and are funding giving weapons. I have mainstream news in the stack today on that. No, no, no. It's gun owners, conservatives, libertarians, constitutionalists, people that believe in a new world order, people that believe there's a world government. Folks, the world government's been announced. Will you get the world government on CNBC queued up, please? As they announce that we are slaves to world government. We wrote an article a few weeks ago. 
was in our inaugural magazine, the InfoWars magazine. And what did it say? What did it say? It had dozens and dozens of links to mainstream news and world leaders saying world government has been established by foreign banks and that they're going to cut off our resources and bankrupt us to control us. And then in the ensuing civil unrest, they're going to have the police come out and take over and everybody will applaud it because they're dealing with the economic collapse, which was engineered. This is the end of freedom, the end of America. Did you guys find that clip? No, we're, we're uh, digging it up. We're going to come back from break, take a few calls, and play that clip. It will come out of break with it from CNBC. And I've got all these stories here, just, 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 just in everyone's face where this is happening. Be ready, callers, because I'm not taking a lot of calls today, but I'll give each person about a minute when we come back. Anita in FEMA Region 7, uh, General Mayhem in FEMA Region 6, Patrick in FEMA Region 10, Stan in FEMA Region 4. Your calls are coming up. So mostly what they do is hold summits. I think that right now the question is, do we all work for central bankers? That's what I want to address to our guest tonight. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world, the central bankers in charge? Jim, Jim Urio, you say we've got some downside here, a correction in the markets. Fine. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Aren't we all just counting on the fact that there's a Bernanke put, put and that we won't go any lower than, say, 5% uh, down from here? Of course we are, because if we look at the economic data, there's nothing to get excited and about. And that's that. CNBC. So there are hundreds and hundreds of articles and clips where they break all this down. They call it global governance. They've bankrupted Europe by design. They got the European countries to sign onto the debt that was really the bankers. This is real. And now they've got citizen spies everywhere teaching them speech is illegal. See, they're already trained for the next phase when they try to arrest everybody. And I got news for you. Your little Red Dawn banker takeover. It didn't Ruskies or the Chai Coms coming to get us. It's the bankers and your bankeristas. It isn't going to fly, okay? Got a little newsflash for you. All right, let's go quickly. Each caller is going to try to get a bunch of people in here. We got like 14 of them. Uh, Anita uh, calling from Indiana, which is what, FEMA Region 7. Uh, we are under FEMA Regions, folks. We have 10 governors as well in 10 regions. Uh, the other governors have been told to sit down and shut up publicly. Uh, you're on the air, Anita. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. And I'm from Iowa. And I'm sorry, Iowa. You, that's okay. I wanted to let you know that uh, I live in a small town at oh, 2,000 plus people, and our police department recently purchased 10 AK-47 rifles, and also the chief of our the police of our town is also a mercenary. He lists on his employment Triple Canopy Incorporated and also Fifth Force Reconnaissance company. No, they're even putting foreign police chiefs in now. The feds give you money if you do. And yeah, they're mercs. We're, it's, uh, I mean, they're putting FBI, CIA in as the sheriffs, the police chiefs, mercs, foreign mercs. Uh, it's just a very dark day for us. It's a takeover. Just like Hitler had the Vichy French shell out to him before he invaded. Uh, we're in deep trouble. Yeah, it's bad. You know, I came home the other day. I'd gone uptown to get some food. And I came back and one of our finest was parked in my driveway. I had my flash on. He was doing a, a routine traffic stop, and he could see me. He looked in the side view mirror and just glared at me. So I had to go down, turn around, and park across the street. And I have a big handicapped parking thing on my rear view mirror. He saw it. Well, I called and made a complaint, and the chief of police actually called me. And all he said is, well, we'll, we'll talk to him about it. Ma'am, I hear you. Got, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, they don't respect us, but they expect us to respect them. Well, you know, a lot of police are actually awake and good. But, yeah, when you've got somebody, you know, who's a merc as your police chief, you're in trouble. I appreciate your call. A lot of the police chiefs are running drugs. Uh, that's on record. We're in a lot of trouble, folks. I, I mean, this isn't a joke. I hope people understand when this country's got cancer. Uh, General Mayhem calling from FEMA Region 6. Where that, that, that encompasses Texas. Uh, where are you calling from in FEMA Region 6? Uh, what area, uh, what state were you formerly in? I was formerly in the state of New Mexico, Alejandro Cohones. Uh, 
We are now uh, Region 6. Uh, I got a favor I need to ask you. Would, please, let's make one more attempt at the ballot box before we go to a different one and push for Gary Johnson. I know you've had him on, but I haven't heard you talk You know about what? Get Gary Johnson on. He came to town, and, I, and they, they said something, and I was already full, but l l let's get Gary on. Uh, absolutely. Look, I I'm for supporting Gary because he'll at least educate people about liberty, the former governor, for those that don't know, New Mexico, uh, as a libertarian candidate while he travels the country. I listen, I've, I've endorsed him. I've tried to support him. No, oh, no, no. You, you've done good. Just just get him on more. <laughs> hey, what's your take uh -oh. on the 1.4 billion bullets that they admit they bought and they spent it and say Alex said they got 174,000. He's making a big deal out of nothing. I mean, that's really desperate. I think the the prostitute media is disgusting. I don't pay any attention to it. I think the the Department of Homeland Security is going to be in a world of hurt if they miss. Um, you know, anybody they don't get on the first shot, they're they're done. Uh, we're not putting up with this. I I'm a truck driver. I meet people all over the country that are awake and that are furious. Um, you know, nobody wants it to come to blows, but. You know, we're ready if it does. Uh, people are open carrying all over the place here. I know. Uh, listen, I'll, let me tell you. The problem is the globalists know that they're offshore. They want a civil war where we wipe out the police and military. I don't want this to happen. I'd rather have the police and military wake up and realize what's happening. I appreciate your call. Makes me sick. Patrick in Oregon from FEMA Region 10, formerly of Oregon. Go ahead. Hey, how you doing? And God bless you. Thank you, sir. Hey, I'm a pro... I'm a proud resident of FEMA Region 10. Now, I just wanted to say, as far as in Oregon, it used to be really nice here, and it still is, but my father-in-law's in his 70s, and he goes out hunting and fishing. He has his whole life, and he'll go to places where it says, you're not allowed on this land, and it's public land. And it, it, Which under law says happened. you're allowed to hunt there, and they still harass you, and environmentalists come up and tell you you can't be there uh, because they've hired cult members as the forest rangers and BLM. I mean, I mean, look, the average park ranger believes you shouldn't be allowed on the park, period. They're kicking people off national parks just camping everywhere. Oh, man, we're in trouble. Alex, they're foreigners in these out in the forests and rangers, and I see in certain areas they're foreigners. They're not even American. If, if, even if you walk into a Social Security office in uh, California... I had, I, I've had members of the British Parliament on that point out the majority of CPS workers that take kids in England... It's even worse there than here. Are, can't even hardly speak English. They're bringing in people from countries where this is normal as the mercs. That's what I'm telling you. I appreciate your call. Great points. Stan in Kentucky, formerly Kentucky, FEMA Region 4, formerly Kentucky. Uh, welcome from former Kentucky, Stan. Hey, welcome, Alex. Semper Fi. Uh, Semper Fi to you. How are you doing there in your uh, uh, former Kentucky area under FEMA occupation? Well, we've lost our factory. Our manufacturing base is pretty much gone here. What little of it's left is hiring a, a shadow of what it used to. I woke up through NAFTA back in the early 90s. I just wanted to tell people one thing and ask you a question. Just look in your local communities and you'll see the corruption. You'll see the mayor supporting the football stadium and all of these things, but you won't see anything getting done in the, to help the average individual in your city. The factories are leaving, and we just built a new arena here for the basketball team, the college basketball They won't even play taps for veterans now at their funerals there's no money but but they're spending more than I, I saw a marine corps limo yesterday and they've got endless money for the for people to fly around on junkets it's just it, it's incredible uh the guy that woke me up i want to ask you that just ask you and i'll take the answer off the air what did you uh, a guy named chuck harder woke me up back in the early 90s and he had a big radio network going i mean he had like 300 stations at one time and they just shut him down you know, Chuck Harder's a great guy, and I tried years ago to get him on, and he was off air then. I hear he's back on. Let's get Chuck Harder on the show. Chuck Harder immediately. Yes, sir, we'll get him on. Great guy. Uh, great radio host. Great patriot. And we stand on his shoulders. Uh, let's talk to Damien in Indiana, I believe, uh, and that's FEMA Region 10, former oh, Idaho. For some reason, my eyes are going out on me. I can't read from 10 feet away. Okay, they're in Idaho, FEMA Region 10, uh, former Idaho. Go ahead. Hey, God bless you, Alex. Thanks for waking me up. Thank you, sir. What's on your mind? I uh, just uh, can't believe that uh, 1.4 billion rounds, they're, they're buying up. Uh, I don't know how they're going to implement that. And that's in the news. Like that. That's in the news, but they, they say I'm lying about it. Yeah, I know. You're lying about everything, I guess, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess we don't have 10 governors in 10 FEMA regions.
Yeah, but uh, yeah, you're doing a great job. I got to say that uh, they're really uh, coming across strong, so I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you. What's on your mind, sir? Uh, just uh, uh, a lot of I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of government soldiers coming uh, through Boise up here. Um, and then they're doing a lot of war games up here at the uh, the National Guard. Uh, and, uh, so, you know, they never have uh, the warplanes flying out. Uh, we got a we got a base up here, but uh, uh, you know, and, and they're. they're uh, they're, they're gearing up for something, and it's obvious. Uh, oh, it's all part of Brigade Homeland. It's in the Army Times. I said, where well, they're preparing to pull triggers on Americans. That's a quote, Army Times. Let's go to uh, Tony in Oklahoma, formerly Oklahoma, now FEMA Region 6. I reside in FEMA Region 6, occupied territory. Uh, Tony, uh, how are you doing up there in former Oklahoma? Doing great. Hearing your voice there, sir. What's on your mind? Uh, I work for the National Guard, and uh, on a daily basis, I play your program uh, for everybody's enjoyment, and I get a lot of mixed reviews, but uh, I work with a lot of conservatives, and uh, they fell, one of them fell hook, line, and sinker for the, uh, the old Social Security, 175000 uh, He He come in and told me, no, they only got it for the fraud, you know, they have to do that, you know. You know well, all you got to do is print him up the articles about the $1.4 billion. Talking to a wall sometimes, you know, Fox News, they, they got a, a very... I tell you what, call me back tomorrow, 11 a.m., all of you. I promise we'll blow it out with calls tomorrow. Incredible hearing from you. I should have gone to him earlier. Get out there and spread the word about the foreign banking takeover.